This video is going to talk about digoxin, which was one of the more confusing medications that we used during my intern year in internal medicine. But every now and then when you had a patient who was in AFib with RVR and needed some rate control, some of the old school cardiologists would love digoxin. However, it would make a lot of people nervous because it has a narrow therapeutic window and a high risk for toxicity that can have some pretty nasty side effects. Uh, but we still see patients on it right now. It still has value. So I think it's valuable to just go over the mechanism. And then the next video, we'll talk about some of the toxic side effects of it. So to quickly go over the mechanism of action, digoxin works at the potassium binding site on the sodium potassium ATPase channel on myocardiocytes. And by blocking this, it basically decreases the gradient of sodium outside of the cell and inside of the cell. Now this decrease in the gradient of sodium will basically slow down or even potentially pause the sodium calcium exchanger. And when you do that, you're basically retaining a lot more calcium within those myocardiocytes. Um, and so that increase in calcium causes more contractility, which is very useful for patients who have congestive heart failure. The next sort of side effect that we see from this decrease in the sodium gradient concentration from the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell is a slowing of the heart rate and a slowing of conduction, which makes a useful medication for patients who are in AFib or A-flutter that have rapid ventricular rates. So in summary, digoxin is going to increase your contractility, decrease your electrical conduction, and decrease your heart rate. However, digoxin unfortunately has a very narrow therapeutic window and can become toxic very quickly. So I'm going to talk about a little bit of what the risk factors are as well as what are some of the signs and symptoms for toxic levels. A few of the risk factors for patients developing toxic levels of digoxin include advanced age as well as a low body weight. Um, you could also have medication non-compliance where patients taking too much, and you can also have reduced renal function or reduced kidney function. Some of the electrolyte abnormalities that can cause toxic levels are hypokalemia, since digoxin binds to that potassium site on the sodium potassium channel. Um, you can also have potentiation of the toxicity with hypomagnesemia, as well as hypercalcemia. Before we get into the signs and symptoms of toxicity, I just want to point out some normal EKG changes that you can see with digoxin. It's normal to see a little bit of ST downsloping depression or some scooped out appearances of the ST segment. You can also have a prolonged PR or shortened QT interval, and occasionally you'll see T wave flattening or inversion. These are all normal though, these are not signs of toxicity. Mild symptoms include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, as well as visual changes, which include blurry vision, flashes, as well as a green tint to the vision. Scary signs of toxicity are going to be ventricular tachycardia, as well as atrial tachycardia with AV blocking, and that's when you're going to want to reach for Digibind, which is the antidote for life-threatening emergencies.